Hey everybody, Scott here. It's been really cold in North Georgia recently, colder than usual. I know it's been cold all over the place, but it's it's really unusual for it to be this cold here. I don't want to really talk about that as much as I want to talk about my truck a little bit. Um, my F-350 uh, turbo diesel that I got a couple years ago. And uh, we'll talk about some of the other trucks I've had, but I want to focus in on this one and talk a little bit about how hard it is to start in the winter time and why I ended up having to buy a block heater for it to get it to start. This truck came from Florida where it didn't need that and it started with no problem when I first got it and of course, of course it was warm in the summer. But I want to show you a little bit about that and how I overcame that problem. <laughs> two trucks here in North Georgia before I got the F-350. One was a 1990 Nissan D100. It was a good little truck. I had it for almost 10 years. It just wasn't big enough and strong enough to do the heavy lifting that I needed it to do. I'd fill up the bed with a bunch of wood and the suspension just wasn't able to handle it and the motor wasn't powerful enough and the transmission was weak as well. Uh, the truck was a good truck. I I drove it for quite a while. I have no idea how many miles were on it when I sold it. Um, but my next door neighbor had a truck for sale. It was a 1984 uh, Chevy uh, K20, um, which was another good truck. Uh, it was heavy duty. It definitely could haul what I needed it to haul. Um, but then a friend of mine in Florida told me he had an F350 that I had looked at a couple times before I knew he had it and he was selling it so I was able to get it for a really good price it had really low miles on it for a 1997 uh, uh, truck and uh, I only had to do a couple things to it when I first got it um, he had to pretty much bury the clutch to the floor to shift gears and even then sometimes the gears would grind and initially my friend told me that well that's pretty normal for these trucks and I had a hard time believing that and, and my neighbor borrowed it one time and said there's no way it, it should be like that so I climbed up underneath the steering column and took a look at the clutch and brake pedal assembly and I saw that the uh, it, it was loose so I spent about a day pulling that whole assembly out and uh, the bushings needed to be replaced in it. So I replaced the bushings. I also uh, replaced the rod in for the clutch uh, that apparently, as, as I came to realize, is a weakness in that truck. So I replaced that and it made a huge difference in terms of how that truck ran. One of the big problems that I have, as I said at the beginning, is when I got this truck, um, I realized I had to put a block engine heater in it. Otherwise, in the wintertime, it was just practically impossible to get started, or it would take forever to get started. And uh, so that was a pretty easy job to do. They aren't that expensive. The only problem was uh, that you that I had to make sure that I was ready to stick that thing in there when I pulled the, the plug out, because the coolant will come squirting out very quickly as soon as you pull the plug in the block and uh, which I did pretty a pretty good job there was an initial burst of, of uh, coolant and uh, I must have had my mouth open because it got a mouthful of it and uh, what I've always heard and from pe heard in the past people say it is very sweet it tastes very sweet so I spent some time trying to flush my mouth out uh, really really well but anyway once once I got that in it made a world of difference so here's 
a couple short videos of the difference that it makes between not having a block motor in and trying to crank it on a cold day versus having a block heater in.